call Robert Black, who's, who's a buddy of mine, and he's a commercial real estate broker. I'm like, hey, Robert, what's, I, don't, I haven't done an office building before. What's the market that's not being met? He's like, oh, 12 to 15 person companies, they don't wanna go in the big pink, they don't wanna go and be like, I'm in the eighth door on the right, on the, on the 14th floor of this kind of vanilla building. They're doing neat stuff inside, they want the building to match, and there's a lot of low hanging fruit in that mix. Most of what we see in Portland is pro forma architecture, and there's a you know, very, very thin margin for anything you know, beyond uh, just housing the square footage that you're going to lease. And even my builder, when costs were coming in high, said to me, hey Kevin, you know, you've got a pretty expensive building here. You've designed a weird building. Why don't you just build a 13,000 square foot, go out to your lot lines, and just go up six, eight, 12, to when you want to stop, it'll be a lot cheaper per square foot. Your rent will be the same, it'll be more profitable. So most people, when they think of highest and best use, they think of maximum use of a space, right? But Kevin's version of highest and best is really more in line with what's going to yield the greatest kind of impact to the community. Everything I do is profitable, but when you go at it from a different angle, from like a guerrilla style angle, whether it's the design or social impact or what's the right fit for this intersection or this mid-block piece that makes the kind of st stitches this neighborhood together um, and adds back to the streetscape yet still is profitable that's kind of that balance that i'm trying to do and it's and it's fun it's, it's a lot easier than just cranking out the same damn building and, and trying to squeeze as much profit as i can out of a out of a building I think of the center of the city as the east side of Burnside Bridge and MLK. This site was very, very difficult. It was one, it was almost like a leftover piece of land. The double site's a 13,000 foot piece of land and it's, a, it's an island site, it's a weird site. So he came and made contact with us and I had heard about the Fairhead Dumbbell, but, and I had seen a rendering, like, I don't know where, but it had been in the past I remember just looking at that going, that is the weirdest looking building I have ever seen in my life. Kevin came in with this model and uh, people were kind of like, what is that? Um, so early on in the design, I, I came in as the project architect and, um, and worked with him on we're trying to make sure we kind of clarified the, his concept, make sure it was clean, as clear as possible. What we're looking at is the plan view for the fair haired dumbbell. This is the direction of north along this this is the Martin Luther King Boulevard and the Burnside Bridge goes here with Burnside right along the property line and Cooch goes right around. It's a very, very tight site here. The biggest challenge on this site is it's the size of a postage stamp and just the fact that we have no real lay down area for even a dumpster, for our subcontractors, um, for deliveries. It's been quite the challenge. We've had to work with a city to close down a lane on Cooch for six or six and a half hours a day and that's all we've gotten. The public space and the sidewalks surround the property and you can walk between the two buildings. What you see here is the landscape bowl. It drains both roofs and it free falls from below the first pedestrian bridge and then it flows down the face of this into a larger, what we call the egg. It's a large oval feature, which is steel and concrete. We're canted out two and a half feet in all, all four sides of each structure. All the floors and beams are plumb, but the walls are leaning out. So that's what creates a harder build. The brackets, the steel brackets that you see that are connected to the column and to the beams, they're, they're a knife plate that's allowed to move so they can flex as we build the building and that causes us difficulty in keeping it in a line. Another unique feature is that these windows are all different sizes. There's four sizes and they're scattered around on all four sides of both buildings so that you cannot identify a floor line from the exterior. All the windows in the building, none of them are in the same place. So layout was always changing for the crew so nothing was repetitive. These are aluminum and glass handrail bridges where one side is fixed and one side slips. This is one of the bridges that connect the building. There's five bridges 
that connect each floor of the buildings. Over my head is a flitch beam which has a one inch steel solid steel plate sandwiched between two glue lambs and the bridge beams float and slide on that bridge on that flitch beam in case of a seismic movement. The building is actually designed to move up to 16 inches. You know, I don't want to get too technical, but between ourselves and the structural engineers and other engineers, there was a lot of, of very technical work that went into making um, this particular assembly of structural elements and finishes all work. <laughs> So if a building of mine becomes great, it's not because of me, it's because of my tenants. So we're Plastic Sunshine. We have a creative agency here um, in the Dumbbell. Uh, we do experiences, campaigns, and content for a variety of clients in a variety of industries. One of the things about this building, which I think is really interesting, is that I think it really embodies sort of Portland in a way. A lot of people feel like it's a little bit out of place, but really if you think about it, it's a building that was based on the idea of someone sort of having a point of view very and being very original about it and not sort of falling in line with all the other development in town. And I think that's what we really loved about Kevin was that courage to sort of take a stand and do something different. So here at 1111 Supply, we mix a lot of psychology about productivity, life, like work balance, happiness. Instantly when I first met Kevin, he had such an authentic, positive energy that wasn't like over the top. He was actually just like excited to meet me. And I have to say, I've met a lot, I mean, in the process of, you know, looking for almost a year for a space, I've met a lot of brokers and a lot of like landlords and, and people, and nobody was just like, hi, who are you? Portland for, is an amazing city as it is. The, the best thing about Portland physically is, the, or, the best things are the spaces between the buildings, not the buildings themselves, I think. So I applaud uh, the city for really raising the bar on high design. The yard and the slate are high design buildings by big name architects in town and they're aspirational. And people like and don't like them in different, as well as the dumbbell. I mean, I, the dumbbell has its detractors, that's for sure. But you can't say that it's not an aspirational building. And my neighbors have done aspirational designs. That's, that's pretty compelling and they're gonna age I think time will be their friend, all of all the building's friends.